Hello, welcome back. Um, as we uh, ended in the last video, uh, we said the goal for the ratio analysis is really just taking the concept of the standardized financial statements one step further. Um, so the, the reason that we compute ratios is also to um, enable us to better compare um, over time for the same companies or between different companies. So as we look at each ratio, the most important question you want to ask is, what is the ratio trying to measure? And why is that imp that information important? Um, and this is, a, this is a critical question because not all companies are the same. So for example, if you are evaluating a manufacturing firm, some ratios will be more important than, for example, if you are evaluating um, a fast food restaurant um, or a software company. So when you look at this ratio, ask yourself this very important question. What is it measuring and why is this information important for this particular company that you're looking at? Um, financial ratios are used both internally by managers so that they can improve the firm's performance and also externally by investors to evaluate whether a company is a good investment. There are five major categories of financial ratios, and each one of them measures different things. Um, the first category is called short term solvency or liquidity. So again, the term liquidity in finance and accounting has to do with how fast an asset can be translated into cash, or converted into cash, or how fast a, li a liability comes due. So the sh short term solvency uh, ratios or liquidity ratios measure the solvency of the firm in the very short term. So again, uh, short term is typically means less than one year. These type of ratios are important to look at what is the most urgent. If a firm's uh, short term ratios are alarming, um, then this is a this is an emergency because if a firm cannot meet its obligation in the short run, it will face bankruptcy right away. Uh, so obviously this is this is high priority. Um, chances are most firms are performing well on the short term uh, on the basis of short term solvency ratio uh, because most companies are uh, are in good shape. But if a company is not, that is definitely a big red flag. Uh, Long-term solvency ratio sometimes is also called financial leverage ratio. This refers to the firm's use of leverage. Uh, another name for leverage is debt. So you talk about how much a firm borrows money and that by itself is not necessarily an alarming fact because most businesses use some form of uh, leverage. And so uh, what we are looking at for a long-term solvency ratio is whether or not the company's borrowing appear to be excessive relative to its peers in the same industry, uh, and whether or not that um, the financial burden created by the long-term borrowing is causing um, the firm to be less optimal in its other operating areas. So those are the things we want to watch out for. Just the fact that a firm used leverage is not a concern. Next, we look at asset management or turnover ratios. Um, this measures the efficiency of the operation of the firm. So turnover can be receivable, accounts receivable turnover that tells you how fast you're collecting from your customers. Uh, it can be inventory turnover. Obviously, that would be a very important number for retailers. You want to not hold inventory on hand as much as you can. You want to turn it over as fast as you can. Um, and then the fourth category of ratios are uh, a lot of what management focus on uh, and what you may have heard a lot uh, the most, these are the profitability ratios. Uh, sometimes these may be referred to as the margins. Uh, what is my profit margin? What is my return on equity? What is my return on investment? So all those are profitability ratios. And then the last category is market value ratios. This has to do with how much the 
the market value this is a term that you use here in finance a lot and market value typically refers to the current stock price of the firm so this is if you heard of uh, PE ratio price earnings ratio those are examples of market value ratio uh, how do they these these types of ratios uh, vary uh, the first four categories of ratios are important to all users both internal and external. The last type of category is market value ratios are particularly important to investors and top management. So if you are a plan manager for a manufacturing firm, you still want to look at the uh, particularly the efficiency ratio and the profitability ratio. If you are a manager who is in charge of an entire product line, for example, uh, you will also be interested in the short-term ratio and to a lesser extent long-term ratio. If you are the chief financial officer of a firm, then you will be focused on all five categories of ratios. Here's a summary of all the financial ratios that we will cover in this chapter. Um, I strongly encourage you to pause the video now um, and go ahead and print out this particular page from the lecture slides. Uh, you want to have this handy with you as you go through the calculations. So pause the video and when you return, make sure that you have the balance sheet, the income statement, and this page of financial ratios in front of you. And then we'll go over the calculations together. Welcome back. Let's go. The first set of ratios I want to look at is the short-term solvency ratio. So for each ratio, we're going to look at what it measures and what information is conveying to us. So for example, the current ratio is defined as current asset divided by current liability. In this case, both items come from the balance sheet, so current asset and current liability. Anytime you encounter a balance sheet item, you may need to ask yourself, well, should I use the beginning balance or the ending balance? Um, the answer is, it depends. So uh, in this particular case, and to keep things simple, uh, I'm going to use ending balance uh, when we are computing the current ratio, quick ratio, and cash ratio. So let's take a look at the uh, balance sheet. So ending means year one. So current, we need current asset, which is $871,550. And then we need total current liability. Current liability is $435,000. So we can divide the two. So for each calculation, once you find the information, go ahead and do the calculation on your own. Did you get about two times. So for when we compute ratios, I tend to take the calculation to four decimal places. So I get 2.0036 times. Um, if you don't get the same answer as I do, please pause the video, go back and check if you get the correct current asset and the current correct current liability. So what does the two the number two mean to us? Well, Let's go back one, take one step back and re remember what current, li uh, current asset and current liability represent. Current assets are cash, uh, asset that we can convert into cash within one year. Current liability are money we have to pay out to our, to our creditors within one year. So obviously we would like to have more money than what we owe. So we definitely want the current ratio to be greater than one because if you have a current ratio less than one, that means even if we were able to collect all the cash from our customers and sell our inventory, we still won't be able to pay off our upcoming liability. And that is not a good sign. So we have a current ratio of two that means we, if we are successful in converting all our current asset into cash, we'll have twice as much money as we need to pay off our current liability that is upcoming next year. So that's a pretty good sign. Um, now this is just one number, and this is assuming we can convert all our inventory into cash. Whether or not this number is good enough, uh, and whether or not we are doing better 
or worse than before, that's where the comparison comes in. We need to compare it to the industry average, our main competitor, and how we were in past years. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is to pause the video and then compute the next two short-term solvency ratio. Uh, when you come back, we'll check the answer. So did you get 0 0.8886 for the quick ratio and 0 0.1609 for cash ratio? So again, I'm gonna. If if you don't get the answer, please pause the video, and um, you can also uh, check and see whether or not you get the right numbers from the balance sheet on the next slide. So this slide shows in details how each of these ratios are computed. So if you take a look at the quick ratio, it's similar to the current ratio, except we subtract inventory before we divide it by current liability. The reason we subtract inventory is because of all the items in the current asset category, inventory tends to take the longest. And if a company is, is facing hard times, sometimes that affects the ability to sell their inventory. Uh, I'll take a recent example. Um, Samsung has problem with his last generation of cell phones, the Galaxy 7. Um, it caught the battery oftentimes to catch on fire. And that affects Samsung. And in that case, the infantry that Samsung holds for its Galaxy 7 will be very difficult for them to convert that into cash. So if Samsung does not have enough cash on hand, it may have run into trouble. And, and the good news is Samsung did have enough cash on hand. So even though it experienced a product problem uh, and its infantry could not be sold, uh, it did not, cause a it did not um, jeopardize the entire company. Uh, so this number, notice that is less than one. And again, that may or may not be significant for, for a firm. It really depends on the industry that the firm is in. Uh, for some industry, this is, this is perfectly fine because uh, if the chances of a company's ability to convert infantry into cash is extremely high. And therefore, um, even though they are slightly shy of of being able to pay off their current liability if they were unable to sell any infantry at all, that is such an unlikely event that it is not a problem. On the other hand, it is an industry where the sales fluctuates a lot. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, companies that are very cyclical or companies that sell heavy machinery um, that depends on the general economic condition of the country. Um, that may be a bigger concern. Uh, and lastly uh, is the cash ratio. This number tend to be very, very low because most companies do not keep that much cash on hand. So what we are going so this is how you compute the actual ratios themselves. And we'll go. Uh, there will be a project at the end of this module where you'll be able to apply this knowledge to an actual firm. We'll end this video here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go over the calculation for the remaining ratios.